elasticity elastic properties of matter an elastic body is one that returns to its original shape after the deformation here you can see we can take a example of golf ball or rubber band or soccer ball it is an elastic body now what is the inelastic body an inelastic body is one that does not return to its original shape after a deformation so we can take a bread for example or clay or inelastic ball this type of case in this type of case it is not able to return to its original shape after its deformation now what is elastic or inelastic an inelastic an elastic collision loses no energy the deformation on collision is fully restored but in an inelastic collision energy is lost and the deformation may be permanent an inelastic stream a spring is an example for an elastic body that can be deformed by stretching here if if we take an elastic string after the application of force f first of all its deformation was x but if we remove the force it will again regain its own shape so a restoring force f acts in the direction opposite to the displacement of the oscillating body that is nothing but equal to minus of kx as the force is apply developing here to the direction opposite to the direction of the deformation so here minus sign is taking now hooke's law when a spring is stretched there is a restoring force that is proportional to the displacement here this type of restoring force f which is nothing but equal to minus of kx the spring constant k is a property of the spring given that is k is nothing but delta of f divided by of delta of x the spring constant k is a measure of elasticity of the spring stress and strain stress refers to the cause of a deformation and strain refers to the effect of the deformation the downward force f causes the displacement x thus the stress is the force and strain is the elongation types of stress a tensile stress occurs when equal and opposite force are directed away from each other here you can see when tension develops means tensile stress develops and a compressive stress occur when equal and opposite force are directed toward each other you can see here compression in any type of compression compressive force stress is developed means tensile st ultimate effect of tensile stress is to elongate the matter but ultimate effect of compressive stress is to compress the matter now summary of definition stress is the ratio of an applied force f to the area over which it acts so stress is nothing but f by a its units is nothing but pascal or newton per meter square or pound per inch square now strain is the relative change in the dimensions of the shape of a body as the result of an applied stress for example change in length per unit length change in volume per unit volume longitudinal stress and strain so for wires rods and bars there is a longitudinal stress f by a that produces a change in length per unit length in such cases stress is nothing but f by a and strain is nothing but delta l that is nothing but elongation divided by the initial length l example a steel wire 10 mm long and 2 mm in diameter is attached to the ceiling and a 200 newton weight is attached to the end now what is the applied stress so here what are the datas are giving now first find the area of the wire what is the area area is nothing but pi d square divided by 4 pi into 0.002 meter square divided by 4 so we are getting a is equal to 3.14 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter square now stress is nothing but force divided by the cross sectional area here we are giving the force value to be 2 100 newton and area is 3.14 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter square so we are getting stress to be 6.37 into 10 to the power 7 pascal now a 10 meter steel wire stretched 3.08 meter due to the 200 newton load so what is the longitudinal strain so given l is equal to 10 meter and delta l to be 3.08 millimeter now strain is nothing but elongation divided by the initial length so we are getting the value 0.00308 divided by 10 so longitudinal strain is nothing but 3.08 in 10 to the power minus 4 as it is a dimensionless quantity here no units 
the elastic limit the elastic limit is the maximum stress a body can experience without becoming permanently deformed means previously its initial length was 2 now after having this tensile stress it is having an elongation so here stress is nothing but f divided by a so if you are giving more load more elongation happen so if the stress exceeds the elastic limit the final length will be longer than the original 2 millimeter You can see if it is elastic, it will again re after application of 2W loads, it will be able to gain 2 millimeter. But here it is not able to gain 2 millimeter. Some permanent deformation happen. So we can tell that it is right now in is in plastic region. It, is, it has crossed its elastic limit. The ultimate strength. The ultimate strength is greatest stress a body can experience without breaking or rupture. Means it is the ultimate stress that it can bear without breaking but if break happens means it crossed it exceeds the ultimate strength example the elastic limit for steel is 2.48 in 10 to the power 8 pascal what is the maximum weight that can bear supported without exceeding its elastic limit so at that time we have to recall that area is 3.14 in 10 to the power minus 6 meter square it has given previously. So our stress is nothing but F divided by A. That value is given as 2.48 in 10 to the power 8 Pascal. So in that equation, if we just plot the, just, just put the value of A, we are getting the value of F. So we are getting F value to be 2.48 in 10 to the power 8 Pascal into A. It is nothing but 779 Newton. One more example. The ultimate strength for steel is 408 and 10 to the power 8 Pascal. What is the maximum weight that can be supported without breaking the wire? Means, again, we can recall the area is 3.14 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter square. So, stress value directly they are given 4.8 and 10 to the power 8 Pascal. So, here we have to find out the value of F. To find out the value of F, we have to multiply 4.8 10 to the power 8 Pascal with A. A is nothing but the cross-sectional area. So we are getting the value F to be 1536 Newton. The modulus of elasticity. Provided the elastic limit is not exceeded and elastic deformation strain is directly proportional to the magnitude of applied force per unit area. That is nothing but stress. So modulus of elasticity is nothing but stress divided by the strain. It is the slope of the straight line portion of the stress strain curve for any mile steel. Example. In our previous example, the stress applied to the steel wire was 6.37 Pascal and the strain was 3.08.4. Find the modulus of elasticity for the steel. So here we are directly getting the stress value and we are getting the strain value. So my modulus of elasticity is nothing but stress divided by strain. So you are putting 6.37 Pascal divided by 3.08 Pascal. So we are getting, uh, sorry, it is 3.08 minus 4, no units. So we are getting modulus of elasticity to be 207 9 Pascal. So the longitudinal modulus of elasticity is called Young's modulus and it is denoted by the symbol capital Y. Young's modulus for materials whose length is much greater then the width of thickness were concerned with the longitudinal modulus of velocity or Young's modulus. So Young's modulus is longitudinal stress divided by the longitudinal strain. We can again derive that f y is equal to f by a divided by delta l divided by l. So it is nothing but f into l divided by cross sectional area into the elongation. And its unit is Pascal or pound per inch square. One more example. Young's modulus for brass is 8.96 into 10 to the power 11 Pascal. A 120 Newton weight is attached to an 8 millimeter length of brass wire. So find the increase in length and the diameter is 1.5 millimeter. So here we have to find out the elongation delta L. For that first find the area of the wire. So what is the area? Area is nothing but pi d square divided by 4. We are getting the value to be 1.77 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter square. Now we have to put the Young's modulus equation. So Y Young's modulus is equal to F into L divided by capital A into delta L or elongation delta is equal to F into L divided by capital A into Y. So we are here, 
we know the value of f we know the value of l we know the value of a and y so if we just put the value we are getting y to be f l divided by a into delta l or delta l is equal to nothing but f l divided by a y so delta l is nothing but increase in length and we are getting its value is 0 0.605 millimeter shear modulus a shearing stress alters only the shape of the body and leaving the volume unchanged for example consider equal and opposite shearing force f acting on the cube below means here you can see shear force always acts parallel to the cross sectional area if this is my cross sectional area it acts parallel to the cross sectional area and if this type of shear force acts what of the stress developed is nothing but the shear stress and due to the development of this shear stress we are having the shear strain value means after the application of load it deforms like this way then we are getting one angle phi so my tan phi is nothing but d divided by l so if and this is the value of strain so the shearing force f produces a shearing in angle phi the angle phi is the strain and the stress is given by f by a as before calculating shear modulus stress is force per unit area if f force is applied and is a is the cross sectional area then stress is nothing but f by a but what about strain strain is nothing but the phi phi is nothing but the d by l or we can tell the value of tan phi so strain equal to tan phi is equal to d by l or is equal to tan phi here as the angle phi is very small we can tell phi is equal to tan phi the shear modulus s is defined as the ratio of the shearing stress f by a to the shearing strain so the shear modulus units are pascals as before so shear modulus is nothing but stress by strain or else we can sell we can say f divided by a divided by the shear strain phi example a steel stud s is equal to 8.27 into 10 to the power 10 pascal and 1 centimeter in diameter projects 4 centimeter from the wall a and 3 36,000 Newton shearing force is applied to the end. What is the deflection D of the start? Means here we have to find the deflection D. So first of all we have to find the cross sectional area A. That is nothing but 7.85 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter square. Now S value is nothing but or shear modulus value is nothing but F by A divided by the shear strain. So we are getting F by A divided by D by L because we know the shear strain is nothing but d divided by l so total equation will be fl divided by ad or d is nothing but fl divided by as so if we are just putting all the values we are getting d value to be 0 0.222 millimeter volume elasticity not all deformations are linear sometimes an applied stress f by a results in a decrease of volume in such cases there is a bulk modulus b of elasticity means if a volumetric stress is applied to any volume then whatever the strain is developed is nothing but the volumetric strain and my volume elasticity is nothing but or bulk elasticity nothing but volume stress divided by the volume strain so the bulk modulus is negative because it is in decrease in volume Since F by A is generally pressure P, we may write B is equal to minus P divided by delta V by B or volumetric strain. So ultimately we are getting minus PV divided by delta V. Units remain Pascal since the stress is unit since the strain is unitless. Example a hydrostatic press contains 5 liters of oil find the decrease in the volume of the oil if it is subjected to a pressure of 3000 kpa or kilopascal assume that b to be 1700 mpa means here we are getting the volume elasticity or bulk modulus to be 1700 mpa we know the formula b is nothing but minus pv divided by the elongation of b so here we are taking delta v is nothing but minus pv by b if we plot all the values we are getting the decrease in volume that is nothing but 8.82 ml 
elastic and inelastic.